Tonight's game, live from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Memphis Showboat, two and five of the USFL, play the Los Angeles Express, also two and five. But let us examine the record. First of all, of Memphis, of the five games they have lost, all five of those games, the teams that beat them started this weekend with six and one records at the top of their division. On the other side, the Los Angeles Express have also lost five games. Four of those losses have been the teams that started the weekend six and one. So they've been playing the big men and the talented men in the league. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson with Don Heinrich. They're young. I said that, Don Heinrich. But when you're young, you want to start with one good skill position, and that is quarterback. As a quarterback, you know, let's start with Memphis. They are starting Walter Lewis, rookie from Alabama. Well, Walter Lewis is one of the quicker runners as a quarterback in professional football. He has a great knack to scramble. He can find receivers when they're open. He is a big play person. Now, it's a matter of his youth developing that experience. I think the players certainly have confidence in him because he has shown that he can make the big play, either run or pass. All right, what about the $40 million man they always call Steve Young, BYU, now with Express? Well, Steve, having only played a couple of ball games, is still really learning the system and learning his personnel. But they expect big things from him. He has tremendous athletic ability, equal skills as a runner. And certainly throwing, there have been very few that can parallel him. And I think that uh, we're going to see big things from him here this evening. Memphis has won the toss and will receive. It is late afternoon in Los Angeles. The temperature still over the 80-degree mark. Humidity down low, 35%. The wind is negligible. The chance of rain almost improbable. And we have a couple of colorful characters here tonight. John Hadle, one-time Kansas star, later with San Diego. One of the nice men in football, beleaguered last week. Uh, Bill Oldenburg, the owner, was upset, but has since said that he is solidly behind Halo and his entire team, and they certainly have a chance to win their first home game of the season here tonight. On the other side of the field, Pepper Rogers, who used to coach in this Coliseum as head coach of UCLA. His last year, he was 9-2 and two before going to Georgia Tech. And you got it, Pepper loves to have fun. And now, for the first time ever, Los Angeles, which has won two games on the road, wearing white uniforms, will wear the white uniforms at home. And there is Derek Crawford. He is the deep man. And kicking off will be Tony Zendejas. 0-4 oh to express at home. Each team 2-5. and five. Each team, as Tom Meese has said, with the chance to make it to the playoffs. But they can ill afford to lose games like this. On the one side, the Express in its second year, nevertheless with 31 rookies. On the other side, Memphis, an expansion team, one of the youngest teams in the league. Los Angeles, California, warm afternoon, and the day of kicks off and the game is underway, and Crawford tracks it down at the seventh. Across the 20, got a big lane, and he can fly. Zendayas, only one man with the angle on him, and he made one right past him, but putting him down from behind, the Los Angeles Express, Alonda Smith, another rookie, a cornerback, but it's first down at the 22 for Memphis with a 71-yard return by Derek Crawford. Well, Derek came into this game, Jim, averaging just over 25 yards a return, second in the league. His longest was a 44-yarder, but he'd certainly topped that to give them Extremely good field position at the 22. Walter Lewis, number 10, the quarterback. Alan Reed, 34. Cletus Charles, 40. The setbacks, Derek Crawford, 9. Cormac Carney, 83, the wide receivers. Gary Shirk, 87, the tight end. We'll give you the offensive line in a moment. Walter Lewis sending Crawford in motion. Gets the ball out here to Crawford. And Crawford inside the 20-yard line. And now that... Offensive line, Greg Roberts, Ken Smith, Art Kuhn, Mike Horton, and Phil McKinley. Defensively, the front four for the Express. Fletcher Jenkins, number 90. George Atika, 75. James Robinson, 99. Charles Ussery, 79. Your linebackers, they only have four tonight. And the starting three, of course, John Fruit will back up them all. Danny Rich, 53. Howard Carson, 54. David Howard, 58. The corners, Tyrone Justin, 20. Wyman Anderson, 22. Your safeties, Dwight Crane, 33. Aaron Mitchell, 34. Second down seven. Quick handoff to Reed, who's not going anywhere. Howard Carson leads the way. 
Carson, number 54, four-year veteran out of Howard Payne. Marks the ball at the 19. It is third down and eight. A play you don't see too often at that stage because Greg Roberts, the left tackle, was pulling from left to right. Reed took a step to his left, and Roberts was coming down with the old tackle trap, but got stuck. Hardy goes wide to the left. To the right side, Reggie Sandilands, who just joined the team, number 82. Time for Walter Lewis to do his thing on third down. He scrambles out of there, still on his feet, dumps it off to Allen Reed. Reed inside the 15-yard line, Reed down, and has the first down at about the 11 with Wyman Henderson hanging on. And Walter Lewis did his thing, and Sandlins did it once he caught the ball. Well, in talking to Walter before the game, he said he just gets a feeling when he has to go right there, throwing from the right side. He sees it right now as he's getting the pressure from Charles Ussery, but he spins out of it and quickly picks up Reed, throws it off, and turns a big loss into a first down situation. First and nearly goal to go on about the 10 and a half. This is Alan Reed again. Reed gets down to about the eight yard line where it'll be second down. Alan Reed played junior college ball, played for the University of Minnesota and played for Texas Christian. And Pepper Rogers, those of you who follow your USFL telecast know they like to call him the postage stamp back. Not $40 million, not a million a year. It cost him a 20 cent stamp to get Alan Reed to come into camp, and he's won the starting running back position. Pepper Rogers, a lot of fun. And doing a good coaching job with this showboat team. Second down, eight. Referees step in for the moment. I would suspect at this stage that Memphis on a second long situation, uh, maybe eight yards, a little bit under, would probably go to the air here. And I would expect that Walter Lewis very possibly is going to roll out to get some, buy some time. Well, Fisher called timeout, Don, because Charles Ussery was hurt and staying in the game. They ordered him out, and Lee Williams, number 73, takes over at right defensive end. Second down, eight. A draw play, Walter Lewis, touchdown! Walter Lewis makes things happen, but remember, Derek Crawford made a lot happen with a 71-yard kickoff return. Walter Lewis averaging better than eight yards per carry, carries for eight on the score. As Walter Lewis drops back, it looks like pass all the way. He ran that twice successfully a week ago in near the goal line, dodges the official there, but has virtually a free lane into that end zone. Big change up there. Really caught him off guard. Number 50 in front of it is a veteran Art Kuhn. Gets a block right there to open it up. The only man that could have stopped him as they kicked the extra point was Dave McCullough, the umpire, that he ran into. But only 12-21 remain on the clock. In other words, in two minutes and 39 seconds, Lewis scores. Memphis leads 7-0. Our game Monday night, New Orleans and Tampa Bay at the Superdome. You can see Tampa Bay 4-3 and three winning last week. A loss could be devastating for them in the Southern Division standings, although we still have more than half the season to go. First down for the Express. They're down by seven. The ball at their own 19-yard line on a day. Well, the game is about 20 minutes old. In the game time, the temperature is 82 degrees here at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Jim, I wouldn't be surprised to see Young go deep here early. Well, Townsell's in motion, and here's Young back, and he's going deep for Townsell, and it's Tommy who's got clear running. With the angle on him, will never make the catch for Townsell, and it's 7-6. 81-yard play. And Don Hodrick is right on the button. Well, you know, Jim, at this stage, two things happen right here. First of all, the Memphis defense, a lot of blitzing, so they get man-for-man -man coverage. This didn't happen to be man-for-man -man coverage. But you can see by the sunlight in the background, the sun is behind him into the shadow. Should have been intercepted. Steve Young got a break. He's only had one interception so far this year as it bounced high. Townsell picked it. And now it's a foot race. As you can see, he's looking back, but he knows that that goal line's down there. He can make it. But if they turn around, they got the sun in their eyes going the other way. Donny Zendez will come in and try to tie this game up. And 
Young does. Well, Walter Lewis has run for a touchdown, and Steve Young, the other good young quarterback here, has thrown 81 yards for a touchdown. And we still have seven minutes to go in the first quarter, a tie game. Seven all, our score, crest with the football at their own 28-yard line. And some big plays here in the first quarter, Jim. The long kickoff return by Crawford, the pass to JoJo Townsell. And a draw for a touchdown by quarterback Walter Lewis. Steve Young. Fake to Nelson. Young, the left-hander. In trouble. Gets the ball downfield. And a good play by Townsell. He came back for the ball. First down. Shut out last week. He's got an 81-yard touchdown. And he's got a first down here. Well, Steve Young can do a good job of scrambling. Walter Lewis isn't the only one. As Townsville's going to go deep, he sees that he cannot get by the defender, Leon Williams, number 29. Now he starts working his way back as Young has rolled out to the left side. Young on the run, hits him in the stomach, but that's what all the good receivers do. they got to work their way back to help that quarterback out when he's in trouble. Ball at the 49-yard line. Young is 4 for 4, 121 yards, 81 of those on one play. First down. Devin Nelson picks up five or six yards. Got to tell you something that happened on the sidelines, Don. You were over busy doing the interviews, but when Steve Young walked past, well, I'll get to that story in a moment. Reggie White, number 92, big defensive end. Working his way down the line, working with Jeff Hart, the offensive tackle, 72, loses him, but then gets a block there as Terry Crouch comes across. A good move by Nelson to cut back inside of the pulling guard. Second out of three will complete that pepper and rock to Steve Young story in a moment. <laughs> Buddy Bode, the up man, has the first down of the one. As he walked by, Pepper said, had I remained at UCLA, I probably, Steve, would try to get you from Connecticut all the way out here to UCLA. He said, I've heard nothing but good things about you as a man, as a quarterback, as great athletic ability. He said, but Steve, as Steve walked away, we're going to blitz you tonight. <laughs> and he also said, didn't he, that you aren't going to know when it's coming. That's right. <laughs> Pepper's a lot of fun. He really is. First down, 39-yard line. Tie ball game, 2-10 to go, first quarter. Townsell in motion. Somebody stepped offside. And it was a member of the Memphis Express. Looked like Steve Doolittle making his first start. On the count, stepped offside, and it's going to be first and five, which will give us a chance to tell you who the officials are. That's Don Wilson, our referee tonight. And that's offside against Express. Dave McCullough, the umpire. Stu Ross, the headlines. And line judge Steve Morehouse. Bill begin as the back judge. Side judge is Willie Spencer and Bob Mantooth as the field judge. Well, I think first and five here for the Express. I think you mentioned earlier. Number 59 on the defense. First down. Jim, I think you had mentioned earlier the fact that Rod Schultz, their veteran player, was out of the lineup, and that's who Steve Doolittle is replacing over there in that linebacker spot. When Schultz went out with an ankle, that went nine of the 15 years starting experience they had on defense. Nine went with Schultz. Nelson being called on to do a lot of work today. And you can see Mike Whittington and Reggie White hanging on. Ever present Reggie White. As Reggie will come from the top of your screen, he's coming down the line of scrimmage. They get good penetration there as they knock 57, Mike Ruther back. But here comes Reggie, number 92 in the red, and what a player he is. Ball at the 33-yard line, second down and short, about three. And playing with a little bit of a sprained ankle. Dwayne Gunn wide to the right. Percy in motion. And Nelson with the football. Nelson trying to get that first down. Down to the 30, very close to the first down. He's either got it or it's third and inches. And a great block by David Hersey, who had gone in motion to that side. And then hook Lamont Jefferson field back on him, the linebacker, in order to give him that opportunity to get outside. Excellent job of blocking. They'll bring in the sticks. It will be close, and he's missed it by that much. It'll be third. third. 
seven to seven to score. Remember that the Express were down here fourth and one and failed to make it. David Hersey coming across. You'll just see him kind of the cut there, 57 spinning out, 51 over running, and then a fine block right there by Terry Crouch as they cut back inside. But Nelson found Mr. Steve Hamilton who just gobbled him up. And Hammond, the leading tackler for the Memphis Showboats. He's always around that football, got a great nose for it. Third down, inches to go. Three. Well, the Express have gone back to huddle once they got to the line of scrimmage, and obviously the officials said they weren't quite ready to set the clock on them, and gives them another chance here. Going for the first down. Allen hanging on, Steve Young. First time he's really run the ball tonight. Quarterback sneak, you're trying to get that surge, you know. Mike Ruther, number 57, the offensive center, and the two guards, Wayne Jones and Mike Durrett, get a good surge in front of him. But the guy that really takes the pounding underneath there is the quarterback. Everybody wants to get a lick on him. The clock you saw moments ago was the clock to get the playoff within the prescribed time. The clock for the quarter now shows 10 seconds to go, and it's running. And Young will get a play away. Young will cross the way, and there's Townsell again. His third catch after none at all last week. First down as the first quarter ends, and the Express have moved inside the 20-yard line down to the 18-yard line. First quarter over. Walter Lewis scored on an eight-yard run, and Young gets Townsell for 81. It's a tie. Seven all, but the Express have the football first and ten at the Memphis 18-yard line. And look at that. Steve Young has not missed five for five, including the 81-yard touchdown pass to Jojo Tanzel. Young looking to Kevin Nelson all the way, and he drops the ball. He's now five for six. But that was to Kevin Nelson. And he dropped it. And if you don't believe me, ask a man who used to throw them to people who dropped them once in a while himself. Well, well <laughs> right now, Jim, Steve Young is saying, oh, gee, many. Why couldn't you hang on to that football, Kevin? It was right there, a little quick screen out to that left side and had some running room. So when he did, he realizes that Nelson felt worse than anybody, but it doesn't really help the cause at this stage. Townsell goes wide to the left, and gun comes to the right. Second and ten. Going for the end zone. Townsell can't hold on to it. And you can see back there that Leon Williams was kind of looking for offensive interference, did not get it. It's third down and ten. Well, a good move by Townsell. And as Young drops back, it's a fade pattern from out there. Gets good vision, good position to throw the football. Nice follow through. You can see him trying to lay it up over the top. Then Townsell in an individual duel over there with Williams trying to react back, almost makes an unbelievable grab. Leon Williams used to be with a band has just joined the ball club. Third and 10 from the 18. Shotgun for the first time tonight for Steve Young. Looking in trouble. Flag downfield, throws it. No good, but a flag went way downfield at about the seven yard line. And Reggie White from the right side, defensive left end, doesn't use a lot of moves just uses a power rush and he was driving offensive tackle Jeff Hart into him to chase Steve Young out of there but it looks like the penalty is going to be against Memphis which would be an automatic first down holding takes the ball to the 13 holding number 25 on the defense that's an automatic first down well I tell you what maybe 25 did it but you got to prove it to me because there's no 25 out there for the defense of Memphis. I think he probably made a mistake thinking Vic Miner, number 23, was possibly 25. First down from a 13-yard line. Now Dunn is wide to the left. Townsell having a great night to the right. Kevin Nelson right up the middle. Nelson down to the four-yard line, about a yard shy of a first down. Second down, a yard to go. Four to go for the touchdown. Good hard running 
just a double team to the inside. 69 carry crowds pulling across. Nelson ducking up in there. Big minor 23 in the red is the one that gets duped a little bit. And then, of course, they close on him. And this is a game that figured, as far as the Express is concerned, that they were going to put the ball in the air because that secondary of Memphis has been vulnerable. But they've kind of found a little bit of running attack. They've been accustomed to throwing the ball 35 times a game and, and running at 25. But thus far, they've established a pretty good uh, running attack as one of the better defensive ends, Calvin Clark, is being helped off the field from the, the Memphis side. Talk about running attack. He's probably the best down lineman against the run. And Clark, the two-year veteran of Purdue, is going out which should bring in Steve Bearden, number 99, a three-time All-Southeastern Conference man, a rookie out of Vanderbilt. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, too, to see him go after Steve Bearden, who has not played a great deal, Jim, up until this stage. And he's got Gary Zimmerman, a tremendous young rookie offensive tackle. So that should be quite a matchup. Second down, a little bit more than a yard for the first down. Nearly five yards for the touchdown. Memphis scored first, the Express tied it, and are threatening again. That's Hersey in motion. That's Kevin Nelson with the ball. Nelson cuts inside, one block, touchdown! Well, it didn't take long to go over to Bearden's side. 65 is Barry Crouch pulling out in front of it. 24 is Tony Bodie that picks up a block there, getting just enough area for Nelson to turn it up inside. And now nothing fancy there. with it. Then they also had the extra point. Calvin Clark was hurt. Steve Bearden came in. They went right at Bearden. Nelson scored. They express lead 14 to 7 after being down 7 0. And Nelson has scored his fourth touchdown of the year rushing. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Coliseum, where 52 years ago, Babe Zaharis was a star in the last Summer Olympic Games to be held in the United States. And this July and August, well, they're going to be right back in the stadium, and you will see a lot of this stadium on your television sets. Track and field to be here, among other sports. Crawford is the deep man, standing at his four, and the day off to kick it off. Crawford lets it go through the end zone and out of the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Now Walter Lewis, the big play man, will have to get some big plays going here. They got tremendous field position on a 71-yard opening kickoff return by Derek Crawford. They did take it in on the 8-yard draw play by Lewis, but since then it has been all express. They lead by 14, and remember, they went on fourth and inches and did not make it on yet another draw. Yes, you'd think that would take a little bit of steam out of them, but they came right back with two very, very good sustained drives. There's Will Allen Reed, and Reed goes for four yards. And Howard Carson puts him down. 72 yards on that last scoring drive, and Nelson taking it over for five yards out, using up, well, nearly six minutes off the clock. There, there's another big difference here. You can argue the merits of Steve Young or Walter Lewis, but there's a lot of money in the 31 rookies on the side of the line of scrimmage owned by the Express. And on the other side, well, that's not a big payroll there in Memphis, but Kevin Rogers is doing what he can, and thus far they got the same record. Press has some great young rookies. Here's Reed trying to get outside. Reed getting the first down, I do believe, the mark across the 30-yard line. Should do it despite the good tackle by Aaron Mitchell, along with James Robinson. Good job of running by Reed, just a little pitch to him. They get the inside sealed off in good fashion. 54 coming across, overruns it just a little bit. That's Howard Carson, the middle linebacker, and then, of course, Reed cutting back to the inside. Good blocking right there. Shirk, the tight end, so important. Number 87, just sealing that right side to give Reed the opportunity to turn the corner. A showboat, first down. <laughs> On the 
Gets the ball on, has his man. And that is number 87, Gary Church, the veteran who played seven years with the Giants. And that's behind him, ahead of him, a first down for Memphis. That's the 43-yard line. And what a good job by Walter Lewis to avoid the rush as he stepped back. He was going for a straight drop back shirt, number 87, the tight end. Slow block, has a little trouble getting through there. He's held up pretty good by Danny Rich, number 53. Then releases shallow across the line. Number 33, Dwight Drain, a strong safety. Goes over the top of him. Shirk knows he's coming, ducks underneath, and then breaks another tackle before three other people get to him. First down from the 43. Lewis is now five for five, but for less than 30 yards total. And now Reed again. A yard or two, and that is all. You can see Rich. You can see David Howard, and now you see Pepper Rogers. Pepper Rogers, the star of that magnificent movie, The Trial of Billy Jack. He was a state trooper, and all of his teammates, or I should say the people that play for him, know the famous line as Billy Jack fled into the woods, when Pepper, as a state trooper, said, shut up and fan out. That was his only line, <laughs> but they remember. You think they call him an officer? <laughs> Second down from the 45. Lewis. Time and a man wide open. Reed. Reed inside the 20 yard line. First down and the showboats come back as Mitchell makes the stop. Walter Lewis doing a tremendous job. That's a 38 yard pickup. Well, you talked about Pepper a moment ago. Pepper said that Walter Lewis has learned to read defenses better. What you can't see is a double zone. But it's wide open down the middle where Reed has released. There is nobody in there to cover him. And Walter reading it, lays it up over the top. 54 chasing him is the middle linebacker, Howard Carson. But a very, very well executed play. That's Carson allowing Reed to get right past him and pick up the first down at the 16-yard line. And now Walter Lewis says we won't talk. He saw something he didn't like. No, we will take time. Ten minutes, 18 seconds to go, and this is the first half. And Pepper Rogers' team down by seven. Now have a chance to tie it up. First down at the 16 with Walter Lewis back to talk things over. And 18 to go in the first half. 130 yards passing for Los Angeles. 81 of those on one play, and a ball that bounced off the hands of Memphis defenders. Memphis 66. You know, you go back to that last play, they got the mismatch they wanted. Reed the back on Carson, the middle linebacker. Dameron is in, and wide to the right, number 89. But instead, they come back this way. Oh, Crawford's not going to go anywhere as Lee Williams wraps him up. Crawford weighs 185. Lee Williams weighs more than 250. And just greeted him and tossed him, actually, for about a half a yard loss. Well, Pepper said that he put Crawford to the flanker position from the split end so that they could run more reverses and do some things with him from, from that position. That's one that Crawford probably will go to the sidelines, uh, depending on what happens here in this drive, and say, hey, coach, that one didn't work. He's got 4-4 four, four speed, but when Lee Williams is standing there, there's not much he can do about it. Second down, better than 10. <laughs> Lewis has a safety valve out there. Cornelius Quarles handles the ball for the first time and only gets to the 15 yard line. David Howard over to put him down. And now it is third down and long for Walter Lewis, the rookie out of Alabama. You can see Walter just developing as we've had the occasion to see him, Jim, earlier this year. Most young quarterbacks, the tendency is to want to go upfield with that ball, the temptation to put it upfield. But he recognized those linebackers were back. He laid it off to Quarles and got at least a couple out of it. Two wide outs to the left, one to the right. Third and eight. Lewis looking for the draw again, and it's not going to get the first down. Walter Lewis looking draw all the way. He scored the touchdown on that. Jenkins got a hand around his ankles and a cheek and put him down. Well, Fletcher Jenkins is probably the best pass rusher. He'll be coming from the left side as Walter is looking to come up the middle, but he's held in there by a Chica and then 90, who you could see just the tail end of it that clipped his feet out from under him, a Chica falling back into it, getting a little bit of help from Charles Ussery. Alan Duncan will try one from 31 yards. He is three for six between the 30 and 40. 31 yards out, it is perfect. 
First field goal of the game, 8.06 to go. Duncan has made it a closer ball game. The Express still lead the Memphis Showboats. Los Angeles 14, Memphis 10. Wow. Los Angeles 14, Memphis 10. Both teams back on the field. And Los Angeles has held on to the lead, getting two consecutive touchdowns. The temperature has dropped nine degrees. It's now 73 as we're about to beginning the second half. Memphis, remember, got its first and only touchdown when Derek Crawford returned the ball 71 yards. That set up a five-yard touchdown run by Walter Lewis. Later, they had to punt on the next two field uh, possessions. Duncan added a field goal of 31 yards and then a punt, and they're on their own 24 when they ran out the half for their 10 points. But Los Angeles has 14 points, Don. Well, the Express have done a good job moving that football. They started from their own 29, and they had to turn the ball over. Then they came back, scored two consecutive touchdowns on impressive long drives. Then a fumble stopped some more potential points. And then the last time, just prior to the half there in the two-minute area, ran the clock down to about a minute and a half and had to punt the ball away. These two teams, we showed as we came on the air, have been battling the teams with the great records and now battling each other starting the night two and five. They're hoping one of them, their own team, walks away with a win. Let's turn to the quarterback for the battle of the quarterback. Well, with the two young people out there, Walter Lewis has been losing the battle so far. The Express wanted to contain him. They've done a good job of it. He's only gotten seven yards running that football. He averages over eight yards. He's had 67 yards passing. On the other hand, Steve Young's had 177 yards in the first half. He keeps that up. He'll have over 300 and 22 rushing with one TD and no interception. So right now, Steve Young has the edge here at halftime. There's already been a man, Don, who has thrown for better than 300 yards today. Doug Williams of Oklahoma threw for 333 as they came from behind to beat Washington. Moon over the Coliseum in Los Angeles. At Memphis to kick off to Los Angeles, the Express lead 14 to 10. The pressure on both teams, both young teams, to do something about winning another football game. Walter Lewis and company, they beat Jacksonville in a thriller on a Saturday night, but then they went on to lose to New Jersey, 35 to 10. And the Express, as you know, lost three in a row to Jacksonville, New Jersey, at last week in the rain to Denver. Here is Duncan to kick off. And that is Gray. Across the 20. Gray fumbled once in the first half. Holds on to it there and gets back to the 28-yard line. And here comes Steve Young, number eight. Nell Gray, 30, who returned the ball. And Kevin Nelson, three, have been alternating in the backfield. Nelson is out there now. Wide receivers, Jojo Tamzel, 26, who caught four balls in the first half. Dwayne Gunn, 83. Mike Sherrod, the tight end, 86. And Dave Percy has been alternating with Tony Bodie as the halfback. One of them primarily to block, one of them primarily to catch the football if they can. Zimmerman and Hart to tackle, Jones with the rest of the guards, Ruth are having a tough job on a shotgun to center. Young to throw on first down. Young whips it out to Kevin Nelson. Nelson across the 30. Nelson across the 40. Nelson went out of bounds. As he hits the 44-yard line by Leon Williams, the newcomer from Tampa Bay. Well, John Hadle said that he shortened up the offensive set. They got a little motion. Nelson, number three, going out to your left. You see the lineman moving to the left of your screen. It's going to be a screen out there as Young dumps it out. The first block out on the left side, Wayne Jones was 65. A good block from the outside as Nelson picks his way up field and gets a nice gain out of it. Hart on Reggie White, the offensive right tackle, number 72, the 10-year veteran. And Reggie, who's an excellent pursuit man, does not get a chance to get into the action. First down, marks the ball at the 42. Young, quick drop, throws it out there, Townsell, who takes quite a hit up there by Leon Williams again, playing that right corner over Brian Howard, who has a bad shoulder. Young falls down just as he gets ready to throw this football. He kind of slips out. You see him sliding to the ground. Townsell just running a hitch to the inside, and then bingo! He takes a lick from Williams. Ball is on the 48-yard line. Out of the second down and four to go. 
14 to 10, Los Angeles early in the third quarter. Kevin Nelson, Nelson gets into Memphis territory down to the 46 yard line. First down. Hanging on was Johnny Walker, number or Jimmy Walker, number 93, and Steve Hammond, 54. Move the sticks again. The drive began, remember, on the 28-yard line. They move the ball down now to the 46-yard line of Memphis. Kevin Nelson having a good night. A balmy night in Los Angeles. Memphis and Los Angeles. Monday night inside the Superdome in New Orleans. The in Tampa Bay. Bodie in motion. Young back to throw. Looking deep down the sideline. And that is Townsell again. And Leon Williams is over to break it up along with Big Miner. Numbers 29 and 23. Well, JoJo in a foot race. Young dropping back. Tries to lay it up to the outside. You see him look upfield to sort of throw the free safety Vic Miner off. But right at the tail end, Miner's going to get a piece after Williams got the initial contact. JoJo says, lay it out over the top. Please, Steve. That smarts a little bit. Second down and 10. Vic Miner, a backup defensive back for Memphis is Duran Major. So they're going to have Major and Miner in the backfield at the same time. Hand off, well played, Nelson. Nelson's got the first down. Down to the 36 yard line. Calvin Clark back in the ball game after being injured in the first half made the stop. And a different type of a draw action as far as the quarterback, Steve Young was concerned. Being a left-hander, he came out dropping to that left side and then did a complete pirouette to get the handoff to Nelson on the draw as Nelson coming over Wayne Jones and Gary Zimmerman, the left guard and left tackle respectively. Some daylight, some good running, and a first down. Express, even though they're up by four points on, they have done a good job of controlling this football most of tonight's game. And coming the other way, Nelson looking for more room. Nelson inside the 20 yard line. Ball is loose and covered by Memphis, they say, and it belongs to Memphis. Nelson fumbled the ball, and Mike Whittington jumped on it. The second time they moved down, Mel Gray lost one in the first half, and now Kevin Nelson loses one here, and they're saying he's down, Don, before he fumbled, meaning Los Angeles did. Good block from that right side, and then out in front of it, 65, Wayne Jones. Nelson ducking back underneath to the inside. Good cutback, overrun there by number 23, Vic Miner, and then as he hit the ground, the ball looked like it kicked loose, and of course the, the ground cannot cause a fumble. So they... Los Angeles Express have reason to be a little upset. Yes, they do. The pepper likes it. Don Hadel shaking his head. From our angle there, you could not tell. Maybe the ball was being juggled as he went down, but we were looking from behind, and we're looking from the side of the booth where we are, but it looked as though to us he was down. Maybe a different angle could tell us something different on official to First down from the 15 yard line. Reed looking for running room. Does not get much. But you know, Lots of folks around him, including Charles Ussery. And you can see Dwight Rain getting up also. Pepper Young's team has dodged the bullet a couple of times. First down, they've been the victim of a bullet, where the ball went off the hands of a defender into the hands of Townsell for an 81 yard score. And Pepper, he's glad to have the football back, but. He really does like to run that football, essentially, and didn't get a whole lot of yards out of that one. He said, come on, guys, we've got to crank it up. We've got to move it. Sandlin to the left, off to the right. Walter Lewis on a handoff to Reed, and Reed gets down across the 25-yard line. It'll be third down and short. David Howard, number 58, made the stop. 11 minutes left, third quarter, 14-10 LA. They were driving for a score. Nelson fumbles, and Memphis has the ball third down on the yard. Well, as dangerous as Walter Lewis is, they ran a, a roll draw type of action there. By that, they send the fullback across in front of Alan Reed, who hesitates as Walter Lewis rolls by him, slips into the football, and got a little, a nice little hole in there. Lewis going deep. 
has a man out there, and it's Cormac. That is Cormac Kearney all the way down to the 17-yard line in the Coliseum where he made his name as the career pass catcher for UCLA, a 56-yard pickup on third and one. Well, he's sitting outside the tight end on the wing. Play action fake by Walter Lewis. Then he slides out to the right, taking to number 34, Alan Reed. In the meantime, Cormac Carmi, Carney ran it down and out. Averaged over 19 yards a catch. Perfect throw right there. And now it's a foot race, which he is going to lose because closing on him is Wyman Henderson. But Wyman was beaten. And you saw the ball being fumbled, but his foot was out of bounds at the time he was fumbling the ball, so it was dead. Here's Crawford, looking for running room, and may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage of that ball. Rich and Mitchell made the stop. Aaron Mitchell, 34, Danny Rich, 53. It is second down, and let's call it still about 10 yards to go. You know one thing, despite the fact that that was a reverse, and a lot of times you run it, and you really, you want to get a big play out of it or get yards, but you do it to keep people at home. On the other hand, tonight, Memphis, with Walter Lewis, who has done such a good job getting outside, people are staying home, and as a result, they were sitting right in it, waiting for it. Gets the ball away to Reed. And Reed steps out of bounds on the 12-yard line. We saw Steve Young in the second quarter. Now we see Walter Lewis in the third, both with great athletic ability. Oh, I'll tell you that. Everybody coming. And Aaron Mitchell, the free safety, is going to come into the picture from the left side. Walter sees it quickly. Being shagged down right there by number 54, and the linebacker, which is Carson, the middle linebacker, who is also coming. They brought them all, and... Then, of course, a good job on his part, the quick release to be able to find Reed and unload it, turn in, turning disaster into a big play. Third down and five to go. The ball at the full yard line. Crawford in motion. Looking for Crawford. Crawford cuts the first down inside the five yard line. Down 14 to 10. Memphis is driving. Wyman Henderson. Ran him out of bounds. Well, Pepper isn't very happy about something. Uh, whether they got the play that he wanted, at least they got the yardage out of it. A well-thrown ball by Walter to Crawford. And right now, Memphis is threatening in the second half. Walter has shown on this drive why he is such a successful young man as a quarterback. Remember moments ago, Kevin Nelson fumbled at the 17-yard line of Memphis. That's Carney in motion. Straight ahead, pull, touchdown! And Memphis goes ahead here in the third quarter. A four-yard run for Canadius Quarles at his first touchdown running the ball this year. Cormac Carney, 83, was coming across and in front of it. Alan Reed gets a nice block. Good blocking is 54. You see Art Q in the center, number 50 driving Howard Carson, the middle linebacker, out of there. Watch 54 just get smoked. 99, James Robinson, the tackle. There's really nothing there for Quarles other than to take it in. Now Duncan to try the extra point, which he does, which is good. And the old cliche is going to be dragged out. Oh, how the fortunes of war, et cetera, et cetera. Nelson fumbled at the 17, Express moving the ball in. Instead, they went the other way, and Memphis scores and leads 17-14. Two rookie quarterbacks, both having great nights. Lewis, not the mileage that Young is getting, but Lewis's team leads 17 to 14 as we begin the fourth quarter. Of the Los Angeles Coliseum, Jim Simpson with Don Heinrich, 15 minutes left to play. The Express down by three, have the ball on their own five yard line, first down. Lewis to Gray, and Gray does not get much. Hammers out a few yards to about the eight. And you can see Jimmy Walker, the nose guard, hanging on to Mel Gray. You have to wonder 
what John Hadel might be thinking in lieu of the fact that Gray fumbled several times last week, fumbled a crucial tonight, and then give him the ball backed up deep in your own territory. At least it's a confidence builder for Gray. And remember, this is not the Mel Gray you remember from the NFL days. This young man is a rookie out of the dude. And there he goes again, Gray. And a good play made underneath down there by number 53. Check that, number 57, Lamont Jeffers. Jeffers did a Lamont submarine Jeffers. job on the left side. And it is going to be third down and seven to go. Well, it would appear they'd have to put the ball in the air. You know, Steve Young reminds me so much of Kenny Stabler in his younger days, and John Hadle made that same comparison yesterday. Stabler wouldn't hesitate to throw back here. Let's see if Young does. Young is on the throw. He's in that end zone. Gets the ball out, and it is caught by Dwayne Young. First down. We have seen some athletic feats on behalf of Steve Young and by Walter Lewis both tonight. Well, with Steve Young, the Major twist around, 54 shot. coming into the picture, Steve Hammond on the blitz. Young go on to the left side, 63, shagged him, Brett Williams. But the fact is, he's going to his left, which is a little bit easier throw for a left-hander as he throws the ball. 14 yards on the back play. Reggie White, number 92, being handled by Jeff Hart, the veteran. Super job there because that's Reggie White's specialty, the power rush and, and take it to you, and Hart gets the good standoff and wins the battle. Young now 16 of 21 for 236 yards. Young still has the football. Young puts it up deep and long and caught by Tanzel. They were playing the man, not the ball. Tanzel was playing the ball and picked up 59 yards. Mark the ball at the 29. Good concentration out there by Townsell. Play action fake. Steve Young's going to unload. Gives it about everything. He's up on those toes. The good follow through. He lays it to the outside. It is a little bit short. Townsell makes a good adjustment, but the guy, Carlton Peoples, the corner, is the one that gets beaten because he does not close the ground on Townsell. There, once again, the good follow-through by Young. That's really good action for a thrower. First down. Stretch down by three. There comes Kevin Nelson to this side. Nelson dragged down on a fine play by Vic Miner, number 23, the free safety. And look at this. Jacksonville, I'm sure they've got a good crowd at the Gator Bowl tonight. They're being shut out by San Antonio, 20 to nothing. And that's in the fourth quarter. Our score, 17-14. Also okay, in the fourth quarter, as Steve Young nears the 300-yard mark in passing. Well, he had 267 a week ago in his second professional start, so right now, he hasn't hurt his club. It's been the fumbles that have hurt him. He's got 284 yards, and Tom Zeller's caught ball for 183 yards. Second down, 10. Young trips, puts it on. Throws it underneath to Kevin Nelson. Nelson not running everybody to get to the sideline. When we third down and five to go, Hammond and Love caught up to it. Young almost fell down. Well, he fell down because he gets some help as he stumbles out of there. 59, Steve Doolittle, his first start as a linebacker. Great job by Young to just flick that ball and get rid of it out there to Kevin Nelson instead of taking a sack. And once again, Jim shows that athletic ability of his as he was stumbling, regained his balance, and then quick-armed it out. This has been an offensive ball game with turnovers, to be sure. This is not a slugger affair. This is watch yourself at all times. If something big could happen. There comes Tony Bodie. Bodie gets to the 20-yard line. If they mark it there, it's going to be fourth down and about a yard. Well, I think Vic Miner took the ball away from the free safety, and he feels that he stole the football. He's down the other end of the field, but it's fourth down on the yard to go. <laughs> he spikes it 75 yards away from the play, but uh, he's just going to have a long run back. He thinks he scored six points. That Four wasn't Vic Miner. That's Duran Major. We've got Major and Minor in the back. That's field. right. It was, major. it was Duran Major. <laughs> major and Minor. Get those confused a little bit. Fourth down. Now, Bodie, Nelson... 
They are not putting out their field goal team. Remember moments ago Zendejas missed at 34 yards. So they're going to go for the yard. They tried this once before and did not get it. Here's Young in the backfield. Drag down. Ball belongs to Metzger. What a play by Leon Williams who just joined the team. The right cornerback just took dead aim on Steve Young and threw him down on fourth down. Excellent job by the defensive unit of Steve Young, faking the ball, intending to roll all the way, but they had Leon Williams coming in the short yardage defense, and he was on top of Young before he ever had a chance. Big play. Second time tonight, Don, that they've gone deep in the territory of Memphis on fourth and one and not made it. That time they lost back to the 26. Cornelius Paul bounces across the 30-yard line of the 32, a pickup of five or six yards. Stopped by Usher. You can bet that Pepper Rogers and Walter Lewis are not of the mentality to sit on the lead at any time of the game, let alone with nearly ten and a half minutes to go. They gotta move that football. They're only up by three. And they know that this express team is a very explosive club and can score in a hurry were it not for those two fourth down situations and then a couple of fumbles three up along the way two that the memphis recovered they could have more points on the board second down reed with the football and reed has got the first down across the 35 to the 37. allen reed carson in the Carson in the middle, number 54, gets the block right there from Art Kuhn, but gets driven right smack into Alan Reed and some help from the other side. He gets David uh, Howard over there, gets in on the action, so uh, they stop it for a short game, but it is first down and still Memphis in football. Here's Quarles. Quarles. Flag is down as Quarles goes down, ridden down by Lee Williams. But a flag is down back at the 37. Talking about those two fumbles that they gave up when they were deep in Memphis territory, Don, they started the game, the Express did, with a minus 12 in the takeaway giveaway situation, which is last in the league, and has crucified them so far tonight. Holding will make it first down and 20, moving the ball back to the 27-yard line. Make it the 28-yard line to move it back to. Yes, when he just quarrels. I think Gary Shirk felt that uh, he was the one guilty of holding. We'll get that call. Quarles doesn't make many big gains. And he says to the guys in the huddle when he gets back, he says, fella, I don't get those kind of holes and that many opportunities. Number 87 on the offense. First down. That's Shirk. The old pro got caught, the nine-year veteran. Says, uh, well, once in a while, if you're going to get the hook out there, uh, they might get you. They got him then. Carney comes wide to the right, Crawford to the left. That's Reed. Reed. Across the 40, and very close to a first down. It'll be second down and a yard or two to go. Aaron Mitchell dragged down Allen Reed after he crossed the 45. Well, they ran that play in the first half, the roll draw. You see 40 quarrels going across in front of it, and there's... Quarrel steps inside. He gets a good hole over there. Good blocking on the right side by Phil McKinley and Mike Horton. And then Aaron Mitchell coming across to make the play. But after a very big game. Second down and a long yard from the 46. Ball looking for that first down and he did not get it. It'll be third down and short. 8.28 to go, 17-14 Memphis. They've got the football, third and short. Good job inside there, short yard and pinch it. 54, Carson, the middle linebacker. Takes a gap in there, and of course, good penetration by the defensive unit. Number 90 is Fletcher Jenkins, 75. Georgia Chica to that side, 73. They all did a good job, Lee Williams, of stuffing the offensive line of Memphis in that short yard situation. Loading up up front, the express. Oh, a hit put on Reed, and he did not get it. And they'll kick the ball away. Carson really hitting the middle linebacker. Well, same defense. 
same type of a defense. They pinched everybody in with that four-man front, which frees Carson up. His job is to key the fullback, which was Quarles, number 40. And Rick it just brought him right there. Excuse me, Don. Rick Partridge, as we said, fumbled a snap last week against New Jersey and also shanked one for 29 yards. He's been kicking well tonight and needs a good kick here. And gets a good kick here. Anthony Allen is going to let it go into the end zone, out of the end zone. They'll come out to the 20-yard line. Los Angeles down by three. They've been able to move the football. But they get it at 20 with 7.14 to go in the game. Jim, i got to ask you, with 7.14 to go, we've seen two games in a row. Birmingham in the last two minutes. Memphis with a field goal in the last play. Are we going to come down to another one of those? Whoever has it last, that's what's happened before. Here's Young on first down. Has Townsell is having a great night. First down, 34-yard line. Doolittle makes the stop too late. And Young continues to add up impressive statistics. With such great statistics, as Townsell now has caught seven balls for 198 yards, you wonder why the Express are not doing that well. Well, they've been stopped twice on fourth and one, and they fumbled twice and lost the ball on four occasions deep in Memphis territory. They have 22 first downs to Memphis is 10, so that shows you how they dominated in that direction. First down for 34. Young with all the time in the world. Drilled it. Coming back is Wayne Gunn. And they say he dropped the ball as he went to the turf at the 43. With Leon Williams, who showed tonight he is a hard hitter, having hit him as Gunn went down. Well, he's getting his opportunity to play. Unfortunately, Brian Howard, the starter over there, is not in the game. So Williams wants to make the most of it as Steve Young is saying, gosh, we've got to hang on to him, fellas. There's not that much time left. For those of you, I may not get this right, but for those of you who do not know, Steve Young went to Brigham Young University, and he is the great, 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 great grandson. Maybe I didn't put enough greats in there. Well, his dad played there, too, for three years. Was that easy? Yes. He was only the great great. Yes, Kevin Nelson. Nelson gets across the 40-yard line. We're going to be third down and short. Steve Hammond brought him down. Third and about two with the clock running down to the 6.15 mark. Three would tie, send us into overtime. Seven might put Memphis in a big hole with time running down on this ball control movement by the Express. They started on the 20, the third and two, the nose of the ball on their own 43. Well, the Express were 38% on third down successes coming into this game, and uh, they've had a few problems, and certainly on those fourth down chances. That's Townsell in motion. Young is going to try, and he puts the ball out. And I don't know what they're going to say. His knee hit where they're marking the ball. He's got the first down. Clark and White holding on. But where he puts the ball, where they're marking it, is a first down. And Steve Young says that he got it. He got it. Good reaction by Steve Young. It looks a lot better than it is. From the left side, you're going to see a quick recovery by Reggie White, 92, to get in there, and Calvin Clark with some help. But it was Reggie White who came off the tackle to make the play, and Pepper said, what do you mean? What kind of a spot is that, ref? Come on, give us a break. Well, they actually put the ball farther than that, but they look where his knee went down, I do believe, and that was still enough at the 45. Well, we'll never know, but do you think John Hayden would have gone for a fourth down again? <laughs> At that spot, I don't know. Here's Young, goes to Kevin Nelson. Nelson is wrestled out behind the line of scrimmage. And that's going to make it second down and 15. Hammond and Brett Williams there. And that clock continues to run. 4.50 to go. Memphis up by three, 17-14. Let's go back a play ago. When you say the pursuit by White, that was really impressive coming on. A lateral pursuit, not going straight ahead for the passer, but seeing what had happened, and White was very quick to his right, running laterally. Really, and that's one reason why people had projected him as the number one draft choice uh, had he not chosen to go at USFL by one of the NFL clubs. Wayne Dunn making his first shot is on the wrong side. Here's Townsell coming to this side. Second down, 15. Young fires, 
And it is no good. Intended for Tony Bodie across the way, but the ball was underthrown. And suddenly, after picking up a first down, it is third down and 15, and there's a yellow flag clear across the field at the 39 yard line. And that's what Don Wilson and company are discussing now. A legal motion. Charged against the express. Oh, we'd mentioned earlier that's one thing that John Hadel had tried to minimize as much action by his offensive unit to make it easier for Steve yeah. Young. Well, the legal motion is refused, and it is third down and 15. Big play time as far as the Express are concerned with 4.13 to go and trailing 17-14. Steve Young's going to have to put it in the air. He's had generally very good protection. And I would suspect that right now Memphis is going to try and come after him a little bit. They got to get some heat. And I would think they might blitz with the fact they have five defensive backs in there. Six. Express have not run at home all year. They wore white tonight to try to break it. Third and 15. Fly pattern. Curtin Peoples and the ball just goes off the hand of Gunn. Peoples got a hand up, but it was there for Dwayne Gunn. Would have been a tough catch, but he did not get it. And it's fourth down. Well, Carlton Peoples will spring in front of this at the tail end as Gunn going down the sideline. I don't know for sure whether he got a piece of that. It looks like he tipped it just a little bit. And now they'll have to kick the ball up or give the ball up. Jeff Partridge, the kick to Kim Dameron back at the 21-yard line. I'm the big factor. Archer, short kick, Dameron calls fair catch, 23 yard line. And that's where it will be. First and 10, Walter Lewis and company after that 38 yard punt have the three point lead, but also the football. But it's first and 10 for Memphis, they lead by three. Ball on the 22. That's Crawford in motion. And Allen Reed with the ball. And that's not the way to stop anybody. As Reed bursts out to about the 26-yard line. Parson hanging on. And it'll be third down and about six. Well, Reed's going to go off the left side behind the blocking of left tackle. Greg Roberts, 69. Ken Smith, 61. And he just really lowers his head with not a whole lot of time. 3.20 to go on the clock. He said, I'm going to take what I can get. I'm not going for any fancy footwork. And he blew on in there for a few yards. Alan Reed now with 73 yards. 88 is as high on the year. Ball for the man in motion. Lewis dropping back. Lewis in trouble, deep trouble. Gets the ball around and nobody near. They're asking for intensely grounding the ball. They're all around the officials, led by Carson. And it's not called. And the whole bench of the LA Express came off. To there the was sideline. nobody there, Don. Really, there was absolutely nobody in the area. John Hadel out on the field, one of his other assistant coaches. There was nobody in the area. This is a situation that the officials should get together, confer, and say, look, guys, or whoever might be responsible, I think I might have made a mistake. What's the, what's the general interpretation on your part? Now, watch Walter as he gets pinned in there. Does a great job as he can do so well, slipping away, getting to the outside, bearing down Fletcher Jenkins, 73, Lee Williams, but there was nobody in the picture with the ball was thrown. Third down. Reed bursts up the middle, flag goes down as Reed is across the 40. And in a foot race brought down by Justin, but it could be holding. I would Paul picks up the flag in disgust, and they'll bring it back. Well, if the Express go on to lose this game, did Kevin Nelson fumble, or had he hit the ground before the fumble was ruled a fumble and recovered by Memphis at the 17? Did Walter Lewis indeed intentionally ground the ball, only he not there. to have it called? He there are going to be some questions asked by the Express well, you they lose this game. You almost have to wonder when you're a coach and on Pepper's side saying, I'll bet you they just even that up. Number 75 on the offense, third down. That's Mike Horton.
That was a 30-yard gain by Reed that would have put him over 100 yards for the first down, would have moved the team out to near midfield. Instead, it is third down and a bundle to go about 17. Pepper's still hot about it. That umpire threw it immediately at the snap. Reed again. This time he's not going to go nearly as far. Gets out across the 20, but they'll have to kick the ball away. With 2.38 and counting on the board. The clock continues to run. We have hit the two and a half minute mark. As they do call time. Well, the Express had three timeouts. I would expect that they were the ones that called it let, rather than let that clock run down 30 seconds. Now they're going to, well, that could have been for Reed struggling off the field. So they started the clock again. And they didn't take a time off, uh, time off the clock. So. Now again, Don will point out about Rick Parkridge had some tough times last week, but that was last week. He needs a good punt here. Anthony Allen is the man deep at his own 37. And he's bobbled a couple tonight. Low snap. Parkridge gets a good one away. Driving Allen back inside the 25 with the 22, and he falls down. And steps out of bounds as he crosses the 30 to the 34-yard line. A 47-yard kick, a 13-yard return, a 34-yard net punt, 158 to go, and Express with the ball down by three points. From the 34, he sends two wide receivers to the right, a slot to the right, a slot left. He's got four potential receivers, five potential receivers. And here's Young. Going to throw across the way, and that is Wayne Gunn, and he's got the football. And that's the first down across the 50 to the 49. Carlton Peoples was there, but the throw and the catch were just too good. 1.49 to go with the clock stopped. Now there's some pressure on Tony Zendayas, who has missed a 34-yarder. Tonight, little or no wind to bother him if he should try to tie it up. Again, Kevin Nelson dropped the ball. And one reason might have been Steve Hammond was just about a yard and a big hit away. Well, I can assure you that he took a little peek, but first things first, you've got to catch that football. Look it in, as coaches will always say. Nelson was looking up, feel, seeing Hammond and getting ready to run. Forgot the football. Nelson has dropped a couple tonight. Yep. Nevertheless, Young is 20 for 30 for 307 yards, but trailing by three. Trying to avert their fifth straight loss at home, their fourth straight loss overall. Steve Young and company on first down, makes that second down and 10. There's Young. Across the middle, Tomzell got the first down inside the 35. First down, Los Angeles. And Steve Young taking a timeout. You got to think that he's saying to himself, "I wonder if I'm going to get any more of those high snaps that I had." Why first take a timeout in the last two minutes? You don't have to. They stop it while he moves the stick, but he did anyway. We'll be back. 131 to go, something that should not be lost in the excitement of this last minute and a half. Jojo Townsell has caught eight balls after being shut out last week for 216 yards and a score. In the meantime, the game is up for grabs. Tony Zendaya could tie it. The Express hope to win it without using him to kick anything but an extra point. First down at the 31. Young looking and underthrows the man on the down and out, Jojo Tamzell. Stop the clock, only used four seconds off the clock, 127 left. They do have to move the football down. Zendayas, who's missed the 34-yarder, has it on two out of four from 49, but that's asking a little much, really. He did have a 56-yarder in college and a 53-yarder, but still, like you say, it is a bit much from that distance right now. Second and ten. Young on a draw. It's going to get some yardage, and that's in an effort to move him a little bit closer for that field goal attempt, if that's what's necessary. But it's going to be third down and three and a half to go. If they don't make that, you'll see this man right here. They've called time again. 1.18 to go. The game is up for grabs. 
Memphis leading by three. I didn't know. One eighteen to go. Why don't you join the guessing game of Don Henrik and me and everybody else in the booth? Is Young going to throw on third and three? Is he going to run? If he doesn't get the first down, do they automatically go to a send out since they missed on fourth and short? You would think they would, but that would be to tie, not to win the game. We'll just sit and see what happens. Third down and three from the 25. I believe he's going to put it in the air. And here comes Kevin Nelson, and there goes Kevin Nelson. First down, stepping out of bounds at the 12. Well, Jim, that's the first time tonight we've seen him out of the shotgun run a running play. And they did a great job with it as Nelson set it up on the right side. The ball snapped a little bit high, but it's just a sweep to the left side. The guards out in front of it completely take Memphis by surprise. Nelson knows where he's going. He wants to get everything he can as he turns the corner, takes the hit from Leon Williams, but stops the clock. You know that Memphis doesn't want to go into overtime. You know the Express would rather win it all, but they would settle for overtime. First down from the 12. Young. Oh, he's got a lot of room. Young will score. Flag down at the 17. Hold it. Hold it. They're going to bring it back. Oh, and what a great run by Steve Young. The flag is down. It looks like it's coming back. He made a great move at the three-yard line to make the tackler miss to score the touchdown. But it appears that it's all for nothing. What a frustrating night. 59 seconds to go. And now it is going to be second down and Holding. 20. Number 72 on the offense. First They're going to put it on the Jeff Hart. Try to keep out Reggie White. Well, all night he's done a great job on Reggie. But unfortunately, in the most crucial play of the evening, Jeff Hart is guilty of holding. And as a result, it takes the touchdown run of Steve Young and a great thing, a great play that it was, back to the 22-yard line. First down. They give it to Nelson going the other way. Nelson dragged down good play by number 23, Vic Miner. And now it is second down, and the clock is running. 47 seconds to go. Vic Miner, baby. 43. Now you can see for yourself. They may be in difficult field goal range. They need a big play. Young. Young. Picked off. Tanzel did not get it, but Leon Williams had it and dropped it. 28 seconds to go. And third down. You talk frustration. Steve Young was very, very unhappy with himself because Townsell had run a post corner, was wide open, had six or seven yards, a gift touchdown, and Young was short with the football and yet could have been intercepted. And again, remember, should have been intercepted because the ball went off the hands on the 81-yard score. Could have been intercepted there now. It is third down. Young on the delay up the middle. Kevin Nelson. Nelson gets down in field goal territory. 20 seconds to go. They've not stopped the clock. They may let it run down and try to kick the field goal, but I would imagine they try to get the end zone once. Seven, six. They stop it, and they're going to go for the tie. Apparently, 14 seconds went off the clock with no decision. They could have run a play and then tried, but it was fourth down, and Young didn't know what they had to do. But it became quite obvious from the sideline. Steve went back and forth. And finally, it was explained to him, Kevin Nelson still isn't quite sure why. It is fourth down, Kevin. But he's <laughs> banging is, his yes. hands together as he comes off the field. Well, you have to think, too, that Steve Young, right. in that situation, as great poise as he has for a young guy, may have lost track of the down. I thought sure he had he one more. Because all he had to do is relax, let it run down to six seconds or whatever, call time. Instead, he was running back and forth. What do I do? What do I do? All right. 
And we may have our first overtime on ESPN this year. Zendejas is going to come in, and it is all on Tony, the former little All-American out of Nevada, Reno, and he is going to have a field goal attempt of about 27 yards to tie this up and send it into overtime. They have never won here at home this year. Now they're looking for the right to try to win it in overtime. 17-yard field goal. From the 17-yard line, 27-yard field goal by Zendaya. High snap, 27-yard goal. It is good. We've got a tie game. And we're headed for overtime. One second left on the clock. Then they house does it from 27 up. The expressive come back to send it into overtime. You would expect Sony Zendejas to squib this ball along the ground. As soon as it is touched, it's all over. Someone have to turn it all the way for this game to end in regulation time. If it does not happen, we'll have the cost of the coin a few moments, and then we'll have overtime. And the first team to score, that is it. Express have never won at home and have lost their last three games in a row total. Here's the squib. Now it will be touched. Now the time is out. And the runner's is dragged down and we're going into overtime. Well, the Express, Pepper, you got to admit it, the Express had all opportunities in the world. They pushed their team around with many more first downs, but they lost two fumbles deep in Memphis territory. On fourth down, twice deep in Memphis territory, they went for the first down and did not get it. And then Steve Young went for what appeared to be the winning touchdown, only to have holding called against Jeff Hart in the last minute of play. And they had to settle later for the field goal to tie it up and send it into overtime. Jeff Hart out there, along with Art Kuhn, two veterans, Don Wilson tossing the coin. And of course, Kuhn says, we want it. You had your choice. It's one of those oddities of professional football and overtime that you don't get each team a chance to score. Whoever receives the ball has got the better chance at the outset because if he scores, it's all over. You know, Jim, the, the field goal that was made there to tie that score, all the other turnovers that the Express have suffered in this football game, you can remember the short one field goal by Zendejas that he missed. That's right, up 34 yards. Well, there's Memphis. On this side is Express. They're all tied, and we are headed into overtime. There's our score, 17 all. They're getting a brief rest period. Walter Lewis and company will have the ball first in an effort to win this game and have the Express their fifth consecutive loss at home and their fourth overall. Lewis has not had the kind of night that Young has had, but his team is hanging in there. Earlier today, remember, Denver was down 21 to nothing to Pittsburgh, but came back in the second half to rally and win it 31 to 21 with Bob Gagliano in relief of Craig Penrose winning that ball game for them, throwing for two touchdown passes. And Oklahoma, with Doug Williams throwing for 333 yards, came from behind in the last 57 seconds to beat Washington by the score of 20 to 16. And then tonight, in a surprise, San Antonio down in Jacksonville in the Gator Bowl, leading the Jacksonville Bulls by the score of 20 to nothing. But those three games haven't seen anything. We've got the game of the day, overtime, 17 all. And you have to think, too, that John Hadle has pulled Zendejas on this kickoff. I want you to kick it away from Derek Crawford, one side or the other. Don't give him that same opportunity, the opening play of the game, to go for over 70 yards on the first return and set up that first touchdown. Neither of these coaches, John Hadle nor Pepper Rogers, predicted victory tonight, but both said the same thing. They thought it would be a highly competitive game, and that they're exactly right. And Pepper said, we're happy to be wearing our red jerseys. We'll feel like we're at home. And on the other hand, the Express said, let us wear the white. We've only won in white, and they were the two games they won on the road. Both teams started tonight 2-5-0. and oh. There's Ray Balavesi there on your right. Gray-haired gentleman. He was the man who was the head coach of the Rams for years. 
And here's the final. Jacksonville has been shut out by San Antonio, 20 to nothing. And for the Bulls of Jacksonville, who would have thought it? They're so competitive. They gave Birmingham fifth the last time out. They're now two and six. And San Antonio climbs up to two and six. Well, I don't know, Jim, but that might be a record for any club that Lindy and Fonte has been associated with to not put points on the scoreboard. Then they are with the 27-yard field goal to tie it. Well, now kick off. Crawford is the deep man. And we begin 15 minutes of overtime, but not necessarily. Whoever scores short of the 15 minutes wins. Deos and that man whoop it's taken by the up man and that is Carney Carney who had great years here as a UCLA Bruin takes it right off of the, out of the hands of Crawford the faster quicker man who might have done a little bit more with it but here's Walter Lewis and company and they've got the ball at the 27 first down Lewis 12 of 18 for the night 141 yards and just 10 first downs for Memphis but right now the most important series as far as the showboats are concerned with Walter Lewis. Has to move that football. Oh, that express offense and Steve Young will get it again. Here's Lewis out here with Crawford on a screen. He's going to come back the other way. Lewis throws a block for him. And there goes Crawford. First down out to the 39-yard line. And Walter Lewis to a devastating block. Wyman Henderson made the tackle. Well, it's a quick screen out to that right side as Walter Lewis firing to Crawford. The block trying to set up, but good pursuit. In fact, so good, they overrun it. So Crawford decides to come back the other way. Right there is number nine, Walter Lewis, or 10, making a, a block for him. Then out in front, a little more help by number 83, Cormac Carney, but they got the first. We are in overtime, 17 all, first down, Memphis. Reed goes nowhere at all. Maybe two yards with Dewey Forte hanging on, number 71. Time is not the factor. To hold on to the football and to score is the factor. Second down. The crowd gets quiet. They have had, meaning they express every chance to win this ball game. But when youth is involved, when it's a team that was getting new players every three days for a long time, from mid-March until now, it's difficult to get the cohesiveness that you need. And Walter doesn't like the play that uh, they had set up, so he chose to take a timeout. Of the 41 and a half yard line, second down, eight to go. <laughs> Lewis, short drop, Crawford, they're on him. He tried to throw, got the football. Down to the corner, an incomplete pass or a fumble. They call it a fumble. Howard on it. Derek Crawford took the ball, tried to throw it, and the question is, was his arm in motion to throw or not? Well, I'll tell you, he got buried in a hurry, and Pepper said yesterday, we got plays, we got Crawford throwing the ball, as well as those quick screens. Lewis coming back, throws it out to him. It's a play that Crawford reversed his field and came back. 22 oh, coming I think in. he's throwing the ball. Wyman Henderson is all over, but I think Crawford had forward movement of his arm. I thought arm. he was throwing the ball. Let's watch he's it again. starting to pump it. He's you sure bet. He's, well, he might have brought it in. He, he might have brought it he in. He reloaded there, and uh, that's, that's it. That's what was costly to him, but a big play for the press. Oh, Howard gets it, and that's a good call by the officials, and the first Memphis turnover made to the men. And Dell in motion. Fake. Out to Tantel. Sets in time. Look out. He's got a clear shot for the end zone. Tantel drags down at the two. First and goal, they go to Express to about one at home. And the turnover did it. 35 yard pickup. Townsend is having an outstanding night. Already over 200 yards after being blank last Monday night against Denver. Well, it was the same type of play that Crawford had run. It's a quick screen. The blitz is on. But Young, with that quick arm, gets 56 coming out there, makes a great block to kick it out. Tom Sell stepped back, gave it a chance to set up for him because he knew he had running room with that blitz and just took off down that sideline. So the Express, once again, threatening slightly inside the two. Here is Crawford again. We said it looked like he was throwing. Now he's trying to throw. Now he's trying. Now he sees the man there. Now he brings it back in. 
and tries to hold on to it and drops the ball. That is a good call. It really was, and Henderson was the guy, the cornerback to that side, number 22, that was bearing down and forced him to reload. Tamzell is now being helped off the field, has caught nine balls for a team record of 235 yards. And I'd like to say it does not look serious, and I think it is not serious, but that remains to be seen. The ball is inside the two. We are in sudden death across the end zone anyway. Running, throwing, or kicking through the uprights, and Los Angeles would have won its first game at home. Kevin Nelson outside, and just shy. Time is not the factor, 12.40 to go. Isn't it ironic, after the two fumbles, after the holding on Steve Young's touchdown run, after the two fourth down situations in a yard which they failed to make it, all of which benefited Memphis, that they commit their first turnover, and that perhaps is going to cost them the game. Well, everybody makes turnovers, and it's where you make them and how you capitalize on them. Right now, the Express look like they're going to capitalize. Let's see a motion. Young carry, touchdown, ball game over. First time ever in 84, the Express win at home. The turnover, power, recovery of the Derek Wilson fumble. The throw by Young, the catch by Townsend. The run by Young, the Express win it. 23 17, Young, two touchdowns, rushing. And the Express send their fans home happy. Well, it's almost poetic justice as far as Steve Young, because he made a great run earlier that was called back. Just a quarterback sneak. Good surge up front by Mike Ruther, 57, as you see him get a lift up in there, and that's what you have to get. You got to move those defensive linemen back, and that was just enough of a crack for Steve Young to get the penetration. Off the right side, he slides a little bit over Terry Crouch, who is the right guard, but you can see the surge of that offensive line, 69 being Crouch. 